Good morning. I just love that intro song, Rachel. The little dee -dee 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 -dee. I love it. I love it. On my end, though, it kind of speeds up. The tempo goes in and out, so I'm like trying to catch up with the beats. But it's all good because I'm awake and on my second cup. So you're drinking the coffee, which I yeah. absolutely love. Do you have your tub? You don't have your tub near you, but the Slimo's Optimum coffee tub. You had told me about the cocoa. Yes. Then they came out with a new formula that added the Optimum, correct? Yes. Yeah, so the which Optimum formula is actually, just to explain this to you, the Optimum formula is the weight loss formula that metabolizes sugar. Like we have people who have diabetes who are getting off insulin mm -hmm. because it metabolizes sugar so well. Mm. And it's the one that helps suppress appetite. And then um, basically it's got those eight all natural ingredients in it. It churns mm -hmm. and burns and makes you feel clean. Yeah. Rachel, I had a leading brand American sugary coffee yesterday I took two sips of it and my whole computer in my body was like oh I felt like I was gonna crash yeah I think the perfect it's word nasty. for it is clean it feels like clean yes. coffee yeah okay I'm gonna say this too we've talked about urine before mm -hmm. but I noticed when I drink other coffee my urine smells bad like I am so glad really we're bad talking about <laughs> urine because Jesus, he made it, right? It's a yes. bodily function. Let's and be urine, transparent. And a, your, your urine is a is telling what's going on in the body, right? right? Right. It gets rid of toxins. That's what urine is for. It's mm. to deliver waste. It's to get rid of waste from the body. So when you drink nasty coffee. Nasty stuff comes out. Ugh. Gross. Okay. Well, I'm excited because then it, the, the, the hot cocoa optimum's been out for... A little bit oh, now. It's we haven't been able to keep it in stock, so okay. it's been out for about four months. This is the first time we actually get a tub of it ourselves. Yes, and I kind of had it for a while and didn't really try it. I really wish y'all could see this. Let me tell you guys, Rachel is picky. Yeah, she well, is a food connoisseur. Well, let me tell you this. So I guess it's because we're in the winter holiday season, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, I like coffee, but. My mom got us on this cocoa kick, so now we're all drinking hot cocoa all the time. <laughs> and this hot cocoa feels like silk. It is so thick. Oh, can you see it a little bit? Oh, I can see it. See, I, ha I haven't even seen it in the tub yet. It, it, I mean, compared to, like, I've bought hot chocolate, I mean, hot cocoa powders at Whole Foods, at the grocery store, right? This stuff is just, like, luxurious. Wow. It really is. And it's really good. Um... It must be for you to be drinking it now because you usually wait till 10 o'clock to drink your That's true. That's morning it. coffee. Yeah. See, I'm on my second cup. There ain't no waiting. <laughs> it's the first thing I do after get up, go to the bathroom. Oh, she's asleep. It's just like coming in her mouth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I'm also 13 years older than Rachel because God couldn't have us on the planet at the same time. Oh, yes. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> we could have been in those party club scenes together. That's right. If we would have been 21 at the same time, we might be dead. <laughs> I'm just saying. By the grace of God. <laughs> so he's like, I need to wait and separate these two couple mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that we would never have been in the clubs. And Rachel's like, I was like, I said, well, I'm 13 years older than you. And it's actually, it needed to be that long because I was still 21 at age 28. <laughs> I was still yeah. acting like I was 21. Yeah. And so. But I don't see the age difference. You're just so lively and you have a lot of times more energy than I do. And you look fabulous, by the way. <gasps> Thank you. Tell them about so, your vest. Can we just talk about money for a minute? Let's talk oh, about yes. the spirit of mammon because I'm going to tell you what happened to me. Okay. So I have lived pretty lean, mm -hmm. comparably, over the last year because I used to work in corporate America and make six figures. Mm -hmm. And in 2015, I wanted to go into ministry. So I took a 50% pay cut. Mm -hmm. And then coming into our own ministry, I took another 50% pay cut, right? So God has really reduced me to build us back up financially. Mm -hmm. So, which is what I asked for. So Matthew gets a bonus and it's, um, 
the first thing that we do is like we panic because Matthew and I have been historically bad with money. Mm. So we pray and um, we we come against the spirit of lust mm. and the lust for things. And so we uh, he was off yesterday, and so we didn't have our son. So we just went to the mall because um, I wanted to show him something. And I don't go to the mall very often, but there was this paper store that I wanted to go show him something. So, of course, the paper store is not there anymore. So I happen to catch, like, I, this. We walk by the Gap, and I don't shop in Gap because it's, like, who wants to buy who wants to buy a sixty five dollar t shirt? Mm-hmm. Not me. Yeah. But I saw this hot pink sweatshirt thing in the window, and I just wanted to know how much it was because you know holidays and stuff. So walk in, and I spot this vest. This vest. It's and, beautiful. Uh, it's forty. Thank you. I it's will have so to say. <laughs> and I will get back to the spirit of mammon because this is really insightful. It's not just about my. Vest. I just quick comment. Okay. I think Melinda's Barbie has that same vest. <laughs> so I would dress just like Melina if I were her size because I was in my sister's store. My sister manages a J. Crew. I was in her store and I saw this tiny mannequin with a gold pleated lame skirt and a red sash and like some sort of dog figure on the front. And I was like, that is totally, I would rock that outfit. <laughs> but it is Melina's size. So I'm just saying. So I see this vest, and, and between the hot pink Sherpa sweatshirt and this shiny vest, I got the two brightest, most, um, you can't help but notice them, outfit thingies in the whole store. And so Matthew's like, the whole store is on sale, like big, deep discounts, because yeah. they're trying to compete with everybody for Black Friday coming up. So Matthew says, I can get you that vest. And I was like, okay. So I get this vest, and I just love this vest. Because I love vests anyway. I just love vests because you're not too hot, but they keep you warm. Mm-hmm. So overnight, I'm I'm in bed, and I'm sleeping, kind of, and I'm restless. And I've got this pit. I've got this just terrible pain in, my, in the gut of my stomach. Mm. And it's worry. Because you know what I'm battling, Rach. I'm battling fear and control. Mm. And... This is, and you know, you know what's fun to say about that is I'm not battling anger anymore. Oh, so truly in deliverance, you guys, you will pass through Get these through layers, layers, and this too shall pass. I was stuck on anger for six weeks. Mm. I'm not battling anger right now. I'm battling fear and control. Like that's the next layer in my deliverance. So I'm like, Lord, what is it? Well, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. I'm scared because this money, even though it's a bonus. We have so much stuff to get and right. so many things to fix that it's just, it feels like it's going to be gone. And what you do, you can't even you enjoy it. Sum, yeah. Yeah. What you do when you get a lump sum of money is you're like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. And then you spend it, you watch it start to go down and you get sick to your stomach because it's going to go away. Mm. I made money a God. Oh, mammon. Yeah. Mammon. So I started thinking about mammon because Jeremy Stone posted something this week and I said, dude, we're going to post the mammon check. So in Pastor Craig's video, Rachel, Mm -hmm. there's a test. So the mammon test is, do you say or not say things because of money and people who have money? Do you do or not do things because of money? If you do, if any of your actions or decisions or thoughts or words are swayed because of money, you are worshiping Mm. the God of mammon. Mm. Then I remembered that Pat Holiday, in her book with that witch doctor guy, mm-hmm. the witch doctor and the man sitting yeah. under the sea, do not open that book unless you know spiritual warfare, people. Um, in that book, he describes, he saw mammon. Mm. Mammon, Rachel, is a goat-like creature that's bronzed. Mm. It's got like goat-hoofed feet. And it's bronze, and he walks around like he's huge. He's like Mm -hmm. 13 feet tall or something, and he's all just gold. I mean, probably, like my best. I I just rebuke that in Jesus' name. (laughs) He's probably like all bronze, right? So I was telling Matthew about it this morning, and I confessed it. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I don't like like feeling out of control with money, and I don't like feeling like panicked that it's going to run out because mm-hmm. I don't depend on money. I depend on you. Right. But how many of us think that way? That's true. And how many of us live? I've lived it paycheck to paycheck where you get paid and you have to have new shoes mm-hmm. and you have to have a new purse and you have to go to the club and you have to do that. And then pretty soon your paycheck is gone mm-hmm. because you don't appropriate the funds correctly because you're not living for Jesus. And then also 
can we just talk about the economy really quick? Yeah. Which would be a great segue into our news Wait, flash. It, yeah. So my husband is all upset because he's like, middle class America can't make it. Mm. He's like, some of my people are making, um, I don't even want to say because people who know me, like I'm live, but some of my people are making X amount of dollars an hour, which is a great wage, but they can't live on it. Mm -hmm. Their rent is too high and this is too high and that's too high. And he was just like, um, he was tormented over that. And I, and I felt like, I was like, I know how that looks, but I need you to know that God takes care of his people Mm -hmm. and maybe they're not supposed to be living in that apartment in that area. Maybe they're not supposed to be getting their hair done all fancy. Maybe they're not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, well, the world has just put so much unnecessary stuff. Cable, this, that, that. Oh, I mean, yes. we're, I'm, we're our family's guilty of it, too. But as you're talking, I'm thinking of all the stuff they fill in our lives that we feel like we need when we don't really even know what our basics are anymore. Well, and check this out. So God says he knows what we have need of. Mm-hmm. Clothes. Food, and a place to stay shelter. and food. So how much, I mean, so truly God will provide that for people, mm-hmm. but they're living in excess. The economy is our own fault. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, how do you teach? Yes, I feel sorry for an underprivileged society, but this society's not living for the Lord. Mm-hmm. They're not saying, Lord, where, where do you want me to live? Mm-hmm. Where should my anointing be? What what neighborhood should I live in? What can oh what, they haven't you... asked him where to go, so yes. then they struggle through that because we know that J C. There's such a oh. difference through praying something through imperfect, yeah, and then going ahead of God's time, telling him where you think you should live, when actually he probably has something better in a better neighborhood than what you think. He knows things right. that you don't know. Oh my gosh, right. that's just a whole show in itself. Oh, yeah. And and so this whole show, you guys, welcome Moms and Miracles and People of God. This entire show is because Rachel and I are a hot mess. We are sinners in need of a Savior, and we have coveted, we have been guilty of every single thing that we talk about. This is us being transparent. If you can glean anything from it, glory to God. Mm-hmm. But this show is for us. This is for Rachel and I to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And anyone who wants to come in with us and get to know Him better— is welcome. Because even if we didn't have the show, we talked about it too. Yep. We'd still be on the phone right now talking about all this. Yep. So we if just we made them live. live <laughs> if we weren't live, we'd be having this exact same conversation. Whether you hear or not. The show because this is not scripted. Nothing is held back. I mean, we just talked about urine, for goodness sakes. You're going to want to have to, you're going to have to rewind that a little bit if you want to hear. But I mean, we're transparent because yeah. nobody tells the truth. Yeah. Everybody hides behind image. Well, I feel like we can't go too terribly long, and it's already 8.15. So did you want to? Yes. So Should we pray? Should we yeah, pray before yeah, we yeah, do this pray. kind of stuff? Do you want to pray since you did the show? Okay. Like you put together the headlines? Yes, you okay. pray. You know what's okay. coming. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone watching you, who Lord. will watch Heavenly Father. And I thank you for these articles and topics and news and stories that we're going to cover this morning, Father Lord. And it's just to show... Uh, not to give any kind of glory to the enemy, but to show what the enemy is up to, mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, Lord. Because yes, we Lord. have eyes to see and we want to know the truth. So this show, these kinds of show is to expose the enemy, show him what yes, he's Lord. doing, and show uh, what you can do, Heavenly Father, and that you're always in the works and you're always in control, Father, Lord. So this is just to give people knowledge uh, because they're getting fed fake news. So we want to give them real news, real topics, and real things that they need to know about that's going on in the world, their community, uh, on the news, uh, in movies and music, whatever the case may be, Father, Lord, so they can be prepared and equipped because our mandate is to equip the saints. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So let's just uh, we uh, guard our ear gates, eye gates, nose gates, all With the gates blood of Jesus. by the blood of Jesus. So we're going to dive into and what the uh, what I wanted to do on Saturdays is just kind of go through some story headlines, uh, what we found interesting. Uh, some of these articles JC has seen, hasn't seen, so you'll get her true reaction. I'm going to read just a few things <laughs> from the article, and then we can talk about it, and then we can move on to the next. And we'll just lead as the Holy Spirit leads. And I have a couple. We might not get to all of them. Um, so give me one second while I switch us over. And I'm trying to pull it up on Facebook so that 
See, my tablet doesn't work when I'm streaming. We'll have to do something different. I'm just going to have to be truly surprised. Yay! Okay. Okay, uh, so you guys, I'm watching here. I know there's a delay. Let's give it a second. So our, our first article, and I know you saw this, Jason, because you shared it, was a Mark Zuckerberg says, brain we where reading wearables are coming, but certain functions may require <laughs> implant devices. Yeah. And as we were talking about, ma'am, and I, I think this is a perfect segue into um, this Mark Zuckerberg um, article that was on CNBC. So Mark Zuckerberg said on Thursday that he wants to work on brain controlling wearable and implantable technology and Facebook's frequent Recent acquisition of C Control Labs was a step into that direction. So when you read this article, JC, did you get a chance to read it when you shared it? I did. I always, I, I, 90% of the time read the articles now just because we've had, you know, feed, feedback and comments and I want to make sure that we're accountable and responsible. Right. Good. And the first thing that I thought of was what Pastor Craig said earlier. And you guys are going to start hearing about us talk about Pastor Craig because we discovered a new pastor who speaks I mean, I'm talking cutting, like it'll dig out all the crap that you have in your soul, like with yeah. a sharp knife, the sword of the spirit truth mm -hmm. for real. Pastor Craig said, said that, oh no, it wasn't, it wasn't Pastor Craig, but anyway, it was the, they're talking about the, the wrist bracelets that you have at these fairs and parks and the chips that you have in your hands to open doors. It's conditioning. They're conditioning you to be able to pay with your hand. That was freaky to me. And Mark Zuckerberg, he's the one that's trying to get the global banking off the ground. He's trying to create his own currency it was called the Libra, mm -hmm. and they and then they were trying to call it the Mark. We did a show on it this summer. But if if Facebook, you guys, has a global banking system, do you know what that means? That means the U.S. dollar tanks mm -hmm. because everybody's going gonna to use Facebook money. Mm -hmm. And then countries, third world, not third world, that's not the right, developing nations is what they call them now. Mm -hmm. Developing nations are going to be able to get loans to do businesses to be like the West. Mm-hmm. And everybody's economy is going to crash, and here comes the one world currency. Right. That's, that's what I saw in that. Yeah, that's very good. Um, I'm sorry, an ad started playing uh, while you were talking. Uh, so I was trying to find the same article without ads, but I can't. So I'm, we can skip over that one. But um, that's just to show that that just shows how much people are, are willing to sacrifice. They actually Ugh. just want to be this blob basically right yeah i mean they're just giving over everything and soon it will be it, it, it i hate to say but it reminds me a lot of the movie wally -E, the disney movie wally -E that came out a few years ago do you remember that movie and how well, all the humans were in space just floating on these chairs and just big blobs oh gosh see i didn't even look at it like that but what this reminds me of is i happen to know a woman who considers herself a Christian, who claims to love Jesus, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> she'd never read Revelation. Mm -hmm. She did. She'd never heard of Mark of the Beast. Mm -hmm. She'd never heard of the. She didn't know what the Antichrist was. Mm -hmm. She. It wasn't in her to seek it out. So two things with that. Number one, you need to pay attention. Right. You don't want to be deceived, and that's what this channel is for, and that's what all of you guys who are on right now, you don't want to be deceived. You want to press into God and pay attention. You want to live for Him. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that is, well, you claim to be a Christian. You claim to love Jesus, but you don't read the Word. Mm -hmm. You don't go to church. You're not living for Him. Like, are you really? Mm -hmm. Like, Yes, I guess you could be saved because the two ways to be saved is to believe in your heart that he was raised from the dead mm -hmm. and to confess with your mouth that he's Lord. So, yeah, you might be going to heaven, but I don't think you're going to have any rewards and you're not living for him here. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of a dead life. It's dead works. It's fake Christianity, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. It's true. Uh, I think that's what I started realizing how fake I really was. And now I feel like I'm coming out of that. And I was just tired of it. Um, well, and let's define fake Christianity yeah. because people are be like, well, they're saved. Well, 
I'm not saying that they're not saved. Fake Christianity to me, Christians are followers of Jesus. Well, if Christi- you're not following Jesus, you're a fake Christian. Well, Christian means Christ like. If you celebrate Halloween. Right? So you're being yeah. a fake Christ like because really you don't know truly who the definition of Christ is. Right. Um, Standing around in your Halloween costume telling me that you're leading people to Christ. Mm-hmm. When I started to think about too, uh, and I posted the graphic yesterday where the guy's kissing Jesus that's on the cross, yet he's ripping out his heart and giving it to this demonic thing. Mm, because that's where his that. really heart is, is over there. And I just need to say, okay, that was an irritating tone that I had. I have very little tolerance for Halloween and people in the church. But at the same time, if their eyes haven't been opened, mm-hmm. like I just talked with one the other day whose eyes hadn't been opened to it. And so she still loves the Lord and is going to heaven and she does live for him. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for her eyes to be open yeah. to it. I mean, so I Father, was forgive, my, forgive my irritable, t- judgmental <laughs> tone on that. Let's move on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, the next article that I know you saw, and our friend um, Tracy shared it as well, because she was talking about similar uh, article, CNN and NBC caught faking photo of baby with measles. And um, I'm showing the picture here where they got the stock image from, and then, and this is what I do for a living. I make graphics, so this is, I didn't even, yes, okay, so this is what, I might go break it down, sister. sister. So yes, this is very. It, when I saw it, I was like, "Wow, that's a telling, telling comparison." How they want to create this uh, frenzy, this chaos, this fear. They want to instill fear in people that this is going to be your baby if you don't get um, vaccines. Vaccine. Also, if they would fake this, what makes you think they're not faking what the NASA pictures look like and what the Earth pictures look like? They're telling you what they're doing right now. That's the first thing I thought of. Um, well, that's interesting. So the first thing that I thought of, and I want you, I want to hear from you on this, Rach. So yeah. we had a really good comment of a, of a woman, um, our friend Patty, whose family is from New York. Mm-hmm. So Patty's like, I'm really conflicted because I heard about a lot of these cases and they were real cases. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not saying that they aren't real cases, right. but I think they're exaggerating the numbers. Because when I have this conversation with my husband, for instance, he's like, oh my gosh, X, Y, and Z had a million cases and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? Tracy, who knows all about this stuff, just says that's not true. Yeah. You know what I found interesting, too? And I wonder if Tracy is watching. If, you know what I think is interesting? This time last year, there were so many stuff on the, maybe because I'm not watching the news as much. So many, like, go get your flu shot. Like, lots of stuff, uh, fear tactics in the news about the flu. But I feel like they've been really quiet because I feel like a lot has been being exposed on social channels about the truth Ooh. about flu shots. So I feel like we're not really hearing a whole lot um, on the news like I did last year because I know the fear tactics that they instilled last year on the news, and it almost worked on me. And I remember I was, but I feel like, They've been very quiet about that because I think there's a lot of people like Tracy, like us, others who are exposing the truth about vaccines and flu shots in general. Well, I hope that's what it is because I just went to a local grocery store Friday or Thursday. I don't remember. It's not to say they're not going to push it. I just don't hear them talking about it on the news basically. As much. Right. Well, that scares me. Because if they're being silent, that means something deadlier is coming. Mm. And then also, there was a giant banner outside this. I mean, giant. You know how much banners cost to make? Yeah. It's a giant banner. And it says, free flu shots on most health insurance plans. If you want to get one here, basically they're offering you a gift card. Like they're going to pay you cash if you get your flu shot here. I mean, duh. Why are why do why does anyone want to pay you to get a flu shot? Yeah. Hmm. Because they're trying to kill you. That's yeah. why. Moving I on. I cover that with the blood. Of, <laughs> yes. I cover that with the blood of Jesus. Yes. There's yes. some devils going to come after that. Yes. So those angels to just bind up those words and. And then uh, a lot of the stuff that you'll hear us uh, sharing can be found on our Facebook page, and as we are uh, working on the Monza miracles. 
we're going to have these recaps where you'll have this video of exactly this, but also the articles that we went. So you can go and continue to do your research, read the full articles. This is just very, really quick. This is what we captured this week. Well, because one article will lead to the next, to the next, to the next. And to pretty more soon truths. You'll, you'll have yeah. to ask the Lord which direction you need to go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so moving on. Now, I thought this was interesting. And I want to say Jason or Chad shared this. Chick-fil-A employee throws down staff, which turns into snake-eating Popeye's false serpents. So I had to read this one because it's very short. And I know you can't see the picture, JC, but it's, a, it's oh, got a Popeye's God. chicken background. It's got a Chick-fil-A employer, and he's got this viper snake in his hand, just like the story of Moses. So are you ready for mm -hmm. this? Ready. Because I think this whole Popeye thing's in a, Okay, so... I've had the Popeye sandwich. It is good. I will say it. It's good. But I will say there is a spirit of chaos and um, anger around it. I don't, it, it, so we'll need to explore that too. And there's actually some really good videos on why that spirit of anger and what's the word? A violence. What is, is this? A, is what anger is this Popeye violence. Popeye sandwich you, you speak, you speak of? of? So Chick fil A. What is this so, Popeye sandwich? What, a couple of months ago, Popeye's. Uh, I always thought they actually had a chicken sandwich, but I guess not. They came out with this chicken sandwich. Basically, people were saying, oh, my gosh, this Chick-fil-A sandwich is better than the Chick-fil-A sandwich. So it was like this oh, chicken sandwich. Oh, the Popeye sandwich, sandwich is better than the Chick-fil-A. Yes. Okay. So, but then and there's they, they were out within probably not even a day or two, and people freaked out. Some people never got to try the sandwich. They couldn't do the comparison, blah, blah, blah. So then recently, maybe a couple of days, a week ago now, Popeyes have brought it back and they're fully uh, have enough inventory and stock of this chick of this chicken salad. Okay. Okay, time out. You know how <laughs> I have my weekly you know how I have my weekly date with Max at the Sonic? Yes. Which I don't condone everyone. It's just where he we he eats junk food right. and gets to spend some mommy time. Right. So we're sitting at Sonic and I'm like, what in the world? Because there's a Popeyes next door. And the Popeye's line is the cars are wrapped around into the Sonic parking lot. Yeah. And you're like, what's going it's on? It's over that chick. Yes. It's the yeah. chicken sandwich. Yeah. So I, I don't go to Popeye's and I guess that's why I don't like the vibe there. I don't like uh, that feel. Mm, I don't yeah. go to Popeye's. Yeah. Um, so as me and Armando, let me explain that. That's spiritual. Yes. Sorry. You're, you're discerning spiritual a spiritual vibe. thing. I'm yes. discerning a spirit. Yes. Yeah. And that might be the spirit that is portrayed upon a brand <coughs> coming from the leaders of that brand. Yes. So that's what Break we're down, trying sister. to say. Um, because I thought this was funny because I was curious about the Popeye sandwich because I do like Popeye's food. Uh, so anyway, as I'm in line with Armando in the drive through line, because he says they have some at this. I was like, let's go try it, right? We get it for dinner. As I'm in line, I think it's Chad or Jason or Josh or one of <laughs> as One I'm of in, our favorite sources. As I'm in line, I think it was Jeremy. As I'm in line, he shares a video. I click on my Facebook because I'm in line at Popeye's. Popeye's, witchcraft and voodoo and their food. I'm like, What? <laughs> Lord, I neutralize every spell, hex, yes. vex, incantation in that's, my food in Jesus' name. I plead the blood. That's exactly what I did. But I think really what that video was trying to portray is the spirit behind this, the spirit behind um, brands. and the what, rivalry. Yeah, the, the rivalry, what brands put, the spirit that people put behind their brands because they do want that money. They do want that popularity, et cetera. Oh, my gosh. So, what if it's witchcraft? Well, I'm pretty sure it is witchcraft because there was a marketing article that I read. They did like a test that they said they got like they they when you walked into the store, this grocery store, it was like a test, a marketing test. And they put all like these tomato cans in the front. It was a decoy test. Have you heard of this? Mm -mm. And they basically they didn't pray over it. They spoke that we we want everyone to buy a can of tomato soup or whatever this tomato can vegetable thing in the sand. That, everybody who walked in picked up a can, picked up a can, picked up a can. They had instilled a spirit of that called and draw people to just buy that can of tomatoes and they didn't even know why. I'll have to find that and so we can share it. Because Rachel. that just goes back to that your words do have 
uh, you do create with your words, and your words do are attached to things and to people. They they become an assignment. Oh my goodness! I had no idea. This is the first I've ever thought of that. Why would that? Why would that not be true? Right. So what? In a grocery what store, brand, in a food chain. Right. So when you feel led to oh keep going gosh. to a brand, maybe it's Starbucks coffee. What's drawing you that? What are those brands? talking about what words are they speaking over their brand to draw people continuously why are you so drawn well, to it and when we do the makeup show which is coming at some point mm -hmm. um because you know how i've just introduced you to ulta well i just got the ulta magazine mm -hmm. and the um urban decay is the worst brand for these nasty names mm -hmm. they have a face makeup setting spray called all nighter Mm. They have uh, perversion mascara. Mm. They have these little vices lipstick. So what I think about when I hear those uh, names that they are marketing, I think of the little young girls putting that on and that spirit oh. that's behind it, you know? Yeah. So, uh, so let me read this quick little article and then we can yeah. move on to the next thing. In Fresno, California... In a meager attempt to establish his restaurant at the, as the chicken sandwich powerhouse, a Popeye's manager went into a nearby Chick-fil-A, because it's interesting, they're always pretty close in distance, uh, mm -hmm. and cast down two staffs, which allegedly transformed into two vipers before a mildly, a mildly amused Chick-fil-A manager. However, witnesses claimed the Popeye's manager had shouted, hey, What's that over there before pulling the actual snakes from their robes and tossing them on the floor? In prophetic retaliation, the Chick-fil-A manager threw down his rod, which became a larger serpent, devouring the other two while gagging a common reaction to eating anything from Popeye's. Arms spread to the <laughs> odd patrons, the Chick-fil-A manager proclaimed, Let not your hearts be hardened like unto how, how tough Popeye's chicken is, for what is... That stuff they slather into their tenders, old rice krispies or something. Well, at least I'm open on Sundays, said the dejected Popeye's employee, gathering his trick staffs from the ground, reciprocating with a smug. So is how Chick-fil-A's a prophet retrieved his rod, changed into a microphone and dropped it. Foiled again, the Popeye's manager started stacking wood for calling down fire from heaven contests. So I thought that was an interesting, and this is on the Babylon Bee. They have a lot of trending uh, topics and uh, uh, stories and such for it, but that was on November 13th. Did that really happen? I'm not sure. As I was reading, I was like, I don't know whether to believe this or not. Well, I'm actually, I would like to give glory to God for my discernment because two years ago, I would have believed that because <laughs> I believed anything. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it's a joke, but it's something interesting to talk about because that's how kind of you do feel about the two. Well, so I was looking up because you all when you're when you're researching things, you always want to find the foundation. Right. You want to find the root. So right. I was looking up Popeye's corporate office. Their headquarters is in Miami. Mm. Um, in Miami. But see, Pastor Monty says we have a spirit of prejudice on cities because <laughs> Miami's no no grocer or <laughs> Dallas. <laughs> don't have the spirit of prejudice on yeah. that city. Yeah. But um, I would have thought it would have been based in Louisiana, which well, would have made so sense too. with the witchcraft and stuff. Yeah. Um, well, someone even if, pointed out that they have, uh, and they're even getting into naming their things, certain stuff. I think it's either a voodoo chicken strips or a voodoo. They have a Mardi Gras cheesecake. Um, you know, you know, Rachel, you know the discernment that you have that's just like spot on, pinpoint accurate. And yeah. you know how mine is not so much. God gives me feelings. Like you might know it in, in like you might know it instantly, but for some reason I've never been able to eat those voodoo chips, those those kettle chips called voodoo chips, I've even before I was Yeah. Oh yeah. Even before I was all into this stuff, I've just never been able to eat oh. it. I've never been able to shop at Mac. I've never been able to wear Urban Decay makeup. I've never been able to do all this stuff. So uh, Sherry is saying the Babylon Bee, that's where this article came from. It's a Christian living thing. Babylon Bee is satire. Oh, it's it's humorous prose. Yes. Thanks, Sherry. But it, it brought us some good conversations. Thank you, Sherry. 
Who knows? Because that stuff's going to happen. I believe that stuff's going to happen. Well, Not and this was between too... Popeyes and Chick Fil A, but yeah. between us and yeah. and darkness. But this was uh, interesting because it's not really too far fetched. I could see people doing something like this. <laughs> I really could. So. Well, Thank you, when Chase. you think when you think about, okay, so yes, this is a joke. That article is a joke. But what's not a joke is some of the other horrific stuff that you're seeing, like the as above, so below Baphomet statues that are going up in Mm. Oklahoma City's town square. Mm. And, you know, some of this other stuff that is like in your face. But anyway, um, thank God for our Moms of Miracles community. That's a perfect word for it, Satire. Thank you. Thanks, Uh, Sherry. So if you need some good, fun humor, a visit. Which we uh, did. The Babylon we'll Bee. Tell. Jeremy's probably watching us like this. Yes. <laughs> hey, we love it. <laughs> okay, we shared this earlier, uh, and this isn't new either, but it's something we want to make aware to the parents is the Celine Dion and her demonic new clothing line for kids. This isn't new, but I know sometimes what's not new to us might be new to some other parents. So if you see this clothing line coming into your stores, um, I'm not sure where she's going to carry this line. Uh, I think it's in Target. Is it coming oh, to Target? It might it's, be. Probably, it's probably coming to Target. Well, they got everything. Um, we can listen to this quick uh, video. I think we need to do a show on Celine, by the way. This new gender neutral clothing line. Singer Celine Dion, let them have those things. Yes. It's pushing. No one that gets that joke except us. But what's going on? This line is called Celine Nu 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 Nu. I swear to God. What? Celine Nu 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 Nu. And this is the website. It says, to liberate children from the traditional roles of boy and girl. It's to amplify the discussion about a humanistic education which is gender free. She rolled out this new fashion line and it's in conjunction with a, an Israeli fashion line with this very bizarre ad. Ooh. She walks into a maternity ward, blows glitter around the room. All the boys are in blue, the girls are in pink, not after she does her magic. And then in one of the bassinets, this big voodoo doll appears. It's a very strange line. You see it on the right hand side of your screen? See it? Ew. Okay. What, why is that enticing for a clothing Let line? Let me show you the bizarre fashions, okay? These are gender neutral, but they're very dark. There are skulls in the collection. Why you would put babies in skulls, I don't know. Bones. Planned Parenthood. Uh, there's this all-seeing eye that's, uh, you know, a big thing with... with uh, is that kind of the Antifa child? Secret groups. What was that? Bizarre. And this group, this new, 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 new... They have demonic designs with horn hoodies for kids. I thought it's it was Halloween. Very costumes. dark. Good as that. Look What's at this. this. This is from their Instagram. That page. looks like something out of the Wizard of Oz when the lollipop kids. Don't it's really the sick. Lullaby leg came well, up. Celine Dion and the founders of this brand explained themselves in a CNN interview. Listen to Watch this. this. We're at Celine and Anu trying to shape the future of all human beings by saying, find your own individuality. We bring Ugh. a new order a new uh, as order. a concept into the world. Do you know what? You don't know what they're going to become later. And you don't want for them to have psychologically a problem of growth and say, I'm supposed to be like that. I'm supposed to say that. I'm supposed to dress like this because I'm a guy. I'm a boy. I'm supposed to do. No, no, you don't know. Mm. I think that's what people are going to say about this line. This Celine, go, no, 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 no. No, this is going to go the way of Murphy Brown, okay? <laughs> it's all going to be rejected well, by the customer. I don't well, even Laura, understand this. Unless you're a member of the Adams family or a satanic cult, why would you dress your infant in this wear? But they, admitted, the, but, but they admitted what their goals a are. A new order. They want a new order. They want to affect the culture, change mm. the way people... You know, her heart may go on. Her sales are going to go the way the, the, of the Titanic. Who are the helping, <coughs> who are the helping hands um, organizations, Raymond, do you think? Oh, this is a tease. Okay. Yeah, you're moving on. I'm moving, moving on, on from the you. Next segment. Wait I a minute. Was... I want her to put an insignia. You know, Izod well, has the crocodile. I want the sinking ship from Titanic because that's where this line is headed. <laughs> now I've got it. Okay, now, now you... So I thought that was interesting. And that, that was a Fox 4 News. Um, uh, those were Fox 4 News anchors from a different city, but... I, did you hear they said New World quite frequently in that? So, several thoughts. Yes. I hope that it tanks, but I don't think it's going to be as rejected as they think. No. 
because those Fox 4 News people don't understand spiritual warfare. I find it very interesting that it's an Israeli brand. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem being the, like, ground zero for all the world's spiritual battles, right? Right. Where Jesus will reign. Um, Celine Dion. I just want to ask you, Celine, if you'll ever see this video. (laughs) No, you won't, but you might. Celine, do you have breasts and a vagina? Were you born a female? Did you ever want to not be a female? What is this that you, like, it's not even your issue. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just the spirit of Antichrist that people don't understand. The transgender world is less than 1% of the population. But But why is it such a big ticket? Right. I mean, it's just like, this is is what's interesting. It's just like the religious spirits that battle me on homosexuality and the LGBT agenda. Mm -hmm. Homosexuals can be saved. Okay, so everybody, I'm sorry if you just choked on your coffee. Let's all just cover this for a minute. I bind the spirit of offense right now in Jesus' name. I bind the spirit of religion. And Father, I ask that you would carry my words on the arrow of truth into the soil of their hearts that you've already penetrated. Yes. Gay people can be saved. Why? Because there's two qualifications that we mentioned a few minutes ago. If they believe Jesus is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead and they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, they can be saved. Now, if they're living in sin... Their sin of homosexuality, it might be an abomination to you. It might be disgusting to you, but it it ain't no different than your sin of gluttony, your sin of drinking to excess, your Mm -hmm. sin of partying, your sin of coveting at work, your sin of, um, and not just you to be critical of you, our sins. Right. The sin of homosexuality and having sex, laying man with man, which is an abomination to the Lord and might be disgusting to someone who, who is straight, or one um, one, yeah. it's no different right. than our sin, okay? Mm-hmm. So gay people can be saved. Gay people can be, can, can be saved. But the gay, pop, th- that's a spirit, okay? So when, uh, I can't even, this is like a whole two shows in itself, but the spirit of that, okay, that wants to warp and create. Oh, Rachel, there it is. Mm-hmm. It's the same spirit from the Neph- from the Nephilim, mm-hmm. from the fallen angels. Mm-hmm. They want to change and create something that was never created mm-hmm. by God. Mm-hmm. It is a hybridization. Thank mm-hmm. you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. They want to create something that was never created by God. Why did God have to destroy all the women, children, animals, and everything in those villages? Because they were completely corrupted, yeah. genetically manipulated. They were never meant to be. Mm-hmm. The giants were never meant to be. That was rebellion and witchcraft and people's own will and the angel's sin. It wasn't what God created. That's why he had to destroy him. Mm -hmm. And it's just... Transgender is not... It's the the same spirit from the beginning of the world. Yes. And it's teaching, uh, you know, people who don't know Christ, who don't know the Lord, that, oh, I can be my own God and I can choose what my kids are. So, and, and I'm sorry, Christians, how can you not see horns, mm-hmm. darkness, mm-hmm. and it starts off animal, very, yeah. Ugh. Mm-hmm. how can you not see that? Mm-hmm. And it's going to start, they don't want it. yeah, and it's going to start a very, very, just like the, we say it all the time, the frog in the uh, boiling water, it's going to start off really small. They're going to start off with all the kids wear, um, these headbands with all the animal stuff, and then you're wearing tails, and it's just not for Halloween anymore. Now you wear it all the time, anytime, because, and that's just that slow, slow progression into it. And because you know, nobody can, or, this is what it is, they're not satisfied with how God made them. Mm. And they're teaching their kids, you don't have to accept the way you were born. We can change you. But see, and my eyes twitch in, because this is what angers me. Celine probably doesn't even have any, like, where in your life have you ever had to deal with transgender? But you're not surrendered to the Lord. So because you worship Satan, Mm -hmm. the spirit of Antichrist is able to come in you Mm -hmm. and position you like a puppet. This is what's interesting to me is they think they're in charge. Mm -hmm. You're not. You're being used. You're a puppet. You're a spokesperson for Satan. Yeah. And I just really want to say somebody's name right now, but God just restrained my tongue. And Jennifer, who's watching, she, uh, I, I don't want to even try to say your last name. I'm sorry. Um, 
She says, Celine even looks different in the face to me. And I, I'm glad you said that because I thought the same thing. She's got these piercing eyes. She almost very much looks demonic-like as she's talking. Like she wants to make sure you hear what she says. And it's just like poison. And I mean, you can almost see the poison coming out of her mouth. Question, is Jennifer's last name T-S-H-C-H-B-O-L-D? No, you're good with names. It's G U. I L B Boo Gal Boo. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm awful with names. I'm I actually sorry, can't do that one either, Jennifer. Uh, you'll have to leave us a voice clip with how to say, <laughs> say your last name. <laughs> My last name is hard too. Me had is. We get Majeras, all that stuff. But uh, I'm sorry. Anyway, I get yes. Hooper. Oh, Hopper. Hopper. I get Hopper. Hopper. It's like a little bunny Hopper. rabbit. Okay. But okay. So Celine's face has probably changed because it's demonic manifestations. Oh, yes. Yes. And that's the, that's distorting her face. Yes. Yes. So I'm glad you called that out. I Jennifer. think we need to do a show on her because something <laughs> happened when yeah. Renee died. Who's when that name? husband. Oh. Okay. So remember, she was the 13 year old girl that that got discovered, and she's from a family of musicians. And that old gray haired man right. discovered her, kind of like Mariah Carey and Tommy that Tommy Matola, like this. Older man, you know, finds her, makes her, builds her, totally Illuminati. She gets famous, and then he, like, he, he dies, mm -hmm. and then she's crazy after mm -hmm. he dies. I don't know what happened. I don't Some know. Some kind of covering was taken off of her. Maybe, but it wasn't like he was I, oh, really covering. No, no, no. I, I don't, you can have a covering. You can be a demonic covering, too. Mm. So, um, oh. mm. so, yeah, that would be a good show. Okay, so let's go back. Uh, how much what time is it? Rachel and I, I'll be 82, and Rachel will be 69, and we'll be doing a show. Yes. Because <laughs> we have so much to talk and, about. And if you have <laughs> never heard Pat and Sabrina, we're always like, we're the new, we're going to be Pat and Sabrina. <laughs> so last night, I'm listening to Pat Holiday and her precious, Pat Holiday's gone on to be with the Lord just this year, you guys, but Pat Holiday is stuck on a word, and I hear Sabrina go, confidence, and Pat goes, confidence. <laughs> It already is. Yeah, it is. And <laughs> Dina also wanted to add that her brother died right after that. So these really? people, thank you for saying that, Dina, because, okay, the people, the celebrities that you see, they're dealing with stuff just like us. There's deaths in the family. You were born into um, a witchcraft, demonic environment, right? Or you dealt with stuff with your parents or with spouses or stuff. These people need deliverance. Yes. And so now Everybody they're just does. running amok, going with what these spirits are telling them, right? So they're just like us. And so it's interesting when you watch celebrities or you watch stuff on TV, you're like, now that I watch stuff and I know about deliverance, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a demonic spirit. That's a demonic spirit. But they're just running and they try to fix it and fill it in with things, right? With relationships and partying or this or that. And it's just really. You know what I want to, you know what I want to teach? Like I feel I've been given a gift to break down things simply and put it into people's daily lives. I, I can do that with makeup. I can do that with nutrition. Yeah, I can do that. that. So here's like my spiritual breakdown. Not that you can simplify God, right? He's forever. Cause deep. if you could, then he wouldn't be a God worth worshiping. Right. But here's, here's how God showed me. If you are flipping through a magazine or you're bored, Right. And you just feel dissatisfied. Mm -hmm. So you put the magazine down and now you're sitting on social media, but you still feel bored. Mm -hmm. So you get up and you start cleaning a little bit and you still feel bored. So let's say you're a single person. So you get up, you go out, you call your friends, you go meet up at a restaurant. Now you're having a drink. Now you're getting drunk and you feel bored. Okay. That feeling of boredom, what you mean by boredom is actually your soul is thirsty. Mm -hmm. You're trying to fill it with the things of the world. You think a magazine will help. You think a yoga class will help. You think you're stressed. You think, no, that's your physical. Your body is a physical temple. Okay, your body is a physical thing that picks up on the spiritual invisible realm. Mm -hmm. So if you feel bored, you need to open the Bible. Mm -hmm. Because I guarantee you, you, within five minutes of drinking from the water of the word, your soul will not feel bored anymore. And that's, that's how God showed me. There's a lot of people out there just starving. Yes. Mm -hmm. You got to put that magazine down. 
don't call your friends. You need to open that Bible. But JC, I can't read the Bible. Bind the spirit mm-hmm. that is blocking you from reading the Bible. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand. Ask God for wisdom. Yeah. Like you have no excuse, my yeah. friend. And I, I struggle with that a lot too. So a lot of times when I when the Lord does give me something to read and then I come across a word I don't know, I go and research that word. And that just starts expanding and expanding and expanding on that one scripture or that one verse, just start off slow. I mean, small. You don't have to read, oh, start yeah. from the beginning and go to the end. Say, Lord, where do you want me to start? And he yes, will tell and you. He will. I did that recently. He wanted mm-hmm. me to start in Kings. Mm. And I was like, okay. So I wrote down Kings and the characters in first chapter of Kings. You guys, you can teach a Bible study on one chapter of the Bible. You'd be surprised what yeah. he gives you, the revelation that he gives you. I haven't actually been back to study Kings in two weeks because he's taken me other places. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I'll just read Kings a chapter a day. No, ask the Lord. Every day is different when you're led by the Spirit. Yeah, that's true. It doesn't become ritualistic. No. Yeah, because then that's religion. Yeah. Yes. Do as the 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 Lord leads. Thumbs (laughs) down. Ask Jesus. We couldn't couldn't have a Bible planner thing. We'd be like, I don't know. Pray about it. And I'm going to tell you. As we're transparent with the steps, with our journey, we're not a hot mess. God is making us do things to show us things. Yeah. Let's tell him about our 501c3 rates. Yeah, let's do it. And We're we, dissolving it. Yeah. And so we had actually never wanted to become a 501c3. Um, tell him why. Okay. Because we didn't want to come into an agreement with others who are part of this 501c3 system. Does that make sense? Because yeah. those who are involved in the 501c3 may be a satanic church, may be a Buddhist church, maybe this, maybe that, right? Not that we're trying to be a church, but we are in a way a ministry. And uh, we heard some very great teachings on maybe why you shouldn't and coming in agreement. Because if you start as a 501c3, there very well may come a time when the government says, you can't talk about that anymore, or you can't discuss this, you have to talk about this. We never wanted those restraints on us. So me and JC were pretty confident that we were never supposed to become a 501c3. Then a little bit after that, it's interesting how the enemy works, and we learn from our mistakes and comes in with confirmations. Oh, Mm -hmm. this, this, this. And it's interesting, after we had made our mind up, it wasn't too short after that. All these people were like, oh, blah, 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 that. And we're like, and it's not to say those people were demonic or anything like that. It's just saying that Satan will use anybody. Satan will use God's people. Satan will use his people. Just like God will use both. Um, but we were like, well, well, maybe we should. So we prayed about it. But God allowed us to do that. And it's not because he worked in our mistakes. We became a 501c3, and maybe the only reason was to be able to receive that car not too long well, ago. And you know what's funny? You can pick up on that. So what's funny is Rachel and I absolutely were against becoming a 501c3. We didn't want to be in cahoots with the government, which supposedly is in cahoot, cahoots with Baal and Mammon, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, we get we we say we feel like God says no, we're not supposed to be, and then we get all these confirmations, and then we're like, well, maybe God wants us to be. So we start praying about it. Do you remember how Pastor what Pastor Monty said that day? He was upset that we became a five hundred one c three, and then he was like, oh, I'm sorry, girls, I, I I forgot to you know go by what the Spirit of the Lord is telling you. <laughs> we and, hadn't had much deliverance yet. No, this was in January, and he wasn't so, upset like he was mad at us or anything no. like that. But and I love the way Pastor Monty. And that's why he's our pastor because he lets us figure things out. Because then we're like, he was he was startled. I yeah, say. yeah, because he was like, because we had told him, oh, we're not going to become one. And then, he's, <laughs> what, and then there, our next call, hey, guess what, Pastor Monty? He's like, oh. He was like, so you're going to let the government own you then? And I was like, <laughs> and he must have seen, he must have felt like he had, he had wounded us. He was like, oh, girls, I'm sorry. It's okay. Be led of the spirit. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I really love the way Pastor Monty stewards us. Because he does allow us to figure things out. Because he knows make our if, he, if he just gives it a few days, we'll be back like, oh, we figured it out, Pastor Mine. We're not supposed to do that. <laughs> He's like, oh, okay. Good. So, yes, he wasn't upset like mad. No. Because we, I mean, right. 
So it's January. We hadn't, we didn't even, we didn't even know we had demons at this point, really, That's Rachel, true. when we decided to be. So the ministry didn't have any money. So Rachel and I paid for it ourselves. It was like five or $600 to do, to make it a 501c3. And we're like, yes, now billionaires can donate us buildings and we can have all this stuff for people. Like uh, Christian apartments with Bible studies, we had good houses in, for yeah. people. We had and a good plane. Ins- we had, we good had good intentions. We, we did, but at so, the same time, I was still like, "Yay!" But inside, I was like, mm, I really "And like see, it. Rachel, she has like really sharp discernment, and I just literally, if I have peace about it, that's my discernment." If I have peace about it, I feel like, I mean, and not that the Lord doesn't talk to me, but you guys understand it's all different. Rachel here's different than I do. So we come into agreement. We felt like the Lord gave us confirmation. We became a 501c3. And then it was recently on a show with Jason. And Jason said something about the 501c3 and how his ministry is not. And it was like a javelin pierced my heart. And I was like, oh, I don't want to be either. I don't want to be. We felt so icky we about it. it Lord. We felt icky. We took it to the Lord. And sure enough, we feel like we need to dissolve our 501c3. And I'm like, Lord. And I told someone about it. And she's a good friend of ours. And she's like, well, you don't have to tell everybody your every mistake. And I was like, but I do. Because I want them to know. <laughs> we want them to learn from our mistakes. I'm not a crazy hot mess. Yeah. God wanted us to become a 501c3. To experience to show us it. And then dissolve. Like, he wants us to do this. Yeah. Just like. You remember the whole outline you did? We just need that up where it's like the ziggly line, but then it gets us back on the straight line. That's us. So this whole last year, this is our, this is our favorite. We say, well, we believe the spirit of the Lord wants us to go this direction. Let me show you. Just redo it. (laughs) Let me show you where the spirit of the Lord wants you to go. And my new favorite um, analogy is that God puts your feet on forward. So that you can move forward in right. a forward direction. It doesn't matter which direction you're going, but you're moving forward. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. I don't know what that hits me. So <laughs> let me draw us. Hold on. Hold, please. Hold, oh, please. Putting my artistic abilities together. I'm going to put my glasses on. And those of you who don't I'm... know, JC does paint. And she's got some beautiful paintings. Oh, Thanks. Um, I'm going to put, uh, your your face looks like a penguin. I'm not sure why. But Wait, right I, now? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so right here. No, my picture. Oh. Okay, so this is me and Rach right here. This is the path that we feel the Lord wants us to take. <laughs> this is the path that the Lord wants us to take. <laughs> so basically, we spent, we have spent the we year need a, we need getting put, on his path. <laughs> this is our time. Put that back up. We need to put this on the website. This is our timeline, 501c3. Uh, this this radio station, this station, this station, this station. And the Lord just like, just do this, ladies, just do this. But We're like, we feel like the Lord is taking us this way. What he was trying to do was get us on this path. <laughs> and we're like, boop, 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 boop. So we appreciate you hanging in there with us. And, uh, yes, and also, uh, let's talk a little bit about January. So January yeah. 1st, we're going to do a lot more from our own website. We do feel that God wants us to be a resource for people. There's a lot of people not on social media. Yeah, y- Those people who are not on social media do not know that Walmart is selling a book on demons. They do not know. Um, they just don't know. Yeah, because that's not on the mainstream news. So we're going to have a parents warning page on the website. We're going to have a moms of miracles recommends page on the website. We're going to do some live teachings and prayers on the website. So and we're still going to do shows on daily renegade. So we're just going to have some different pockets to for you know, you guys to come into agreement with us. Yeah, that's good. What's next, Rach? Uh, Let's see. It's nine o'clock. Do you want to pray? And um, I had some other Tab. Lord knows we need prayer, but why don't you go through a couple of them and let's just see where they go. Oh, okay. Well, uh, one second, because I closed them. Because, um, you know, I could ahead. be on here till noon talking, know, but my, right. my phone would die. Uh, one second Why I pull them back up. One second. Um. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about judgment really quick, because I feel like there's oh. some new people on here. <laughs> judgment. <laughs> I feel like there's new people on here and they're like, wow, these girls are critical. 
the Lord says that, okay, so there's two, two things. You're supposed to judge the fruit of someone. It, you know, not their heart, right? You know, all this, all this argument that, well, you don't know their heart. Well, yeah, you do because the, mm. out of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm-hmm. So what people are speaking, you kind of know the position of their heart. We are asked to judge the whole judge ye, so you won't, you know, with the whole plank in your eye, is yeah. as you judge, you'll be judged. Mm-hmm. So if you're constantly critical of somebody's outfit or somebody looks fat in those pants, that's the level that people will judge you. But as far as judging righteously, holiness, we are called um, to do that. that kind of stuff, we are called to yeah. be critically discerning. Yeah. So Rachel and I are, are we are judgy against Celine Dion and her new, 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 new. Yeah, because it's no, no, no. It's no. a no, 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 no. It's a no, no, Celine. No. Yeah. That's right. Let's make a shirt. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, the we'll go to this one because this one's so loading. Let me switch us over. So this was interesting. Um, San Antonio. Let me move this because now I can't see. San Antonio Satanic Group kicks off charity drive. Menstruation with Satan. Drive runs through December 3rd. Have you seen this, JC? No, but I, some, something just came to my mind. Okay, good. Well, let me read a little <clears throat> bit more and then we'll talk about it, okay? Uh, San Antonio, sometimes good cause comes with uh, from unlikely places. Earlier this month, the Satanic Temple of San Antonio kicked off its first ever feminine hygiene charity drive called Menstruation with Satan. The donation campaign is meant to help local abuse and homeless shelters distribute the menstruation products to women in need. Menstruation is non-optional physical reality for many people, not people, women, and the continued stigmatization of menstruation is harmful to everyone, the group said in a Facebook post that you can see there. Uh, donations can be made through Amazon or drop-off locations around San Antonio. So far, those locations include Idle Hands Tattoo Studio, Fit for Your Life, Ink and Iron Tattoo Studio, Old Glory Tattoo Studio, and the Satanic Temple of San Antonio. Interesting that they're all, excuse me, all tattoo shops. The ten- the temple is asking local businesses to help participate in the drive by setting up donation boxes. We can even set up donation boxes without any satanic imagery as our main goal is to simply help those in need, the group wrote in the Facebook post. And go, JC. Ugh. First of all, I see Dean I see Dina's face. I can just tell Dina's like looks oh, like that. I that, love that, that face that she does that. I love that face. <laughs> I, I see need Dina's that. Eye face. She does a good do. Good do like, those guys are stupid. But anyway, um, they are. So let's talk about um, their actions are stupid. Let's yeah. talk about those tattoo shops, right? Yeah. So Blood Covenant, right? Yes, I thought about that. And the are blood. they saying menstruation menstruation is bad? Are they saying like are they saying it's bad for the environment? Or are they saying let's use the blood for a sacrifice? So like, I thought that's about your sacrifice to Satan. Well, I th- so I think there's a lot of underlying spirits yeah. uh, agendas behind it but it's interesting just like the freemasons they come in as charity and this oh. is how they fool people is they try to think like oh they do good blah 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 nope um it's all cover up right basically mm-hmm. to get into the hearts of people to trick people right so we're going to create a charity with actually this is a great idea there are a lot of women who maybe don't have the menstruation products that they need, right? Women in need. So it's interesting that, one, it's to show, yes, this is a good drive, but it's, it, I think when you see who's behind the drive, it's, it's, a, it's a satanic church. Uh, what is the agenda behind that? And um, so it was, it was an interesting article. What did you feel when I first read that? Well, I, I hate to be gross, but... Blood sacrifice is what drives demonic occult power. Yeah. So if they're going to have, if a satanic church wants to make something out of blood, right? right, I just, that's the first thing that I thought of was, oh my gosh, they're going to use blood any way they can. Like Mm -hmm. this whole thing, like Katy Perry and that dinner buffet video, I mean, blood the the sac the shedding of innocent blood is what drives a cult, right? Stuff. And what I started to think about is you're talking about it. Okay, just like how we talked about, 
Remember how we talked about the Halloween candy, how witches were going into the stores and praying over candy, and then these kids mm -hmm. are taking it home, right? So I'm wondering if something is being spoken, prayed over spells over these menstruation products, and then they take them home and they are believing on them. Okay, so let me tell, let me bring up a really good point. We're going to have to research it. We can't get into it right. now. Robert Henderson's got some teachings about the courts of heaven. And in one of the teachings, he mentioned that every time there's blood spilled, mm -hmm. basically if it's unclaimed blood, mm -hmm. there's an altar of sacrifice that demons can set up. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what this, what God showed me one time. So one time I'm, I got a paper cut after, after hearing this teaching, I got a paper cut and I felt impressed by the Lord to claim the blood. I said, I forbid any demons to use the blood for my paper cut for your own sacrifice. I tear down the altar. I don't know how they would use it, mm -hmm. but if they're speaking spells over that blood, there's some sort of demonic force. There's some sort of spiritual thing that they can do with it, I guess, if it's unclaimed. That's why if your body is a temple, I mean, everything in us would be holy and sanctified. Mm -hmm. If your body is a temple, I don't, I don't know how that works. It's yeah. just so sick. Yeah, it really is. Satan is just nasty. I don't know how that works, but I can tell you. It's not good. It's not, it's, it's it's not, not good. Innocent. Yeah. If they're using, mm -mm. if Satan, if, if the devil is trying to do a good work, there's an agenda behind it. And the whole blood yeah. thing. Oh, and the fact just, that they're, it's getting promoted heavily by tattoo shops. And tattoo shops, okay. so we know we're making a blood covenant with tattoos. You can with talk the about person that. who's doing it. Mm -hmm. Anytime your skin is pierced, you're making a blood covenant. You're coming into a pact. Mm -hmm. So if you have tattoos, um, the, the Bible says you're not supposed to get tattoos, by, by the way. If mm -hmm. you have tattoos, you can ask the Lord forgiveness mm -hmm. and you can repent. I would repent. I would renounce the tattoos. I would forgive the person who gave it to you. Or if it was your mom, what's worse is moms are taking kids out to get tattoos for their it's a new 14th birthday. To do. Yeah. If, if forgive the person who did it to you, forgive the person who, who, who also with did the tattoo yeah. and break the soul tie. Mm -hmm. You have to break that soul tie. You're in a demonic covenant with the tattoo artist who did it. Mm -hmm. And, and, and see, I've never wanted to get a tattoo. Like I may not have like top of mind discernment, but God has planted in me these desires to not. Yeah. I think God caused me to not want a tattoo. Yeah. I never had a tattoo either. And I, when there I were many those who do. There were many I'm times just, where I was in tattoo shops and was really close to sitting in the chair, but never did. Yeah, I, I thought about it too, but um, if you have had a tattoo, you just need to break the soul tie and ask forgiveness and forgive those people who did it to you. Right. That's it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and Dina brought up a good point. She goes, right, why, why this charity? Why not food or clothes? Regardless, it's very suspicious. It is Anything suspicious. that the satanic church is doing, we should be suspicious of and not, uh, you know, just be, uh, we should be suspicious of it. Exactly. Um, but I want to end on a happy, good note. And I'm going through all my saved articles that I have saved. They're all very, and so <laughs> none of them are like, oh, that's nice. For oh. every 13 or 50, for every 25 articles that Rachel posts, she will post a happy one. Yeah, I will. <laughs> so uh, I can't find one. <laughs> <laughs> that's not your fault. Yeah. Um, but there is a lot of good things going on in the world. And um, it's not to say that... Um, there's still a lot of good and God is still in control as out of control as everything seems to be. He's still in control, yeah. right, JC? And, and even though he's out, of, things seem out of control in the world, he can still be in control of your world, your environment, your home. So yes. let's and make him the God of our homes. My favorite example of this, what God has just really impressed upon me this last year. Okay. When Egypt was going underneath, when, he, when they were under those 10 plagues, mm -hmm. the Bible says that God caused, on purpose, he caused Pharaoh to say no to Moses. I will not let God, these, this man's people go, this mm -hmm. God's people go. I will not let them go. He caused his heart to do that on purpose, to show himself mighty mm -hmm. 
in the eyes of the The Israelites to grow their faith. Yeah. Because these plagues got bigger and bigger and bigger. God caused Pharaoh to say no, and Pharaoh lost his oldest son. Mm. God caused his heart to be hardened. So God can cause and God can allow. And as loving and gracious and merciful and amazing and majestic he is, he is also the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that Bible, that, yeah, that God you read in the Bible is still the God today. He's not this flowers and milk and honey flowing. No, he's still a just God and will just judge right, righteously. He will judge righteously. He will judge. He's still judging. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he has judged because he did everything before. But right. I mean, don't mess with God. No. And don't mess with God's people. And don't worry about this don't touch God's anointed crap that you hear from false teachers and ministers that say, oh, I can't believe you touched talk God's against, anointed. And when they mean touch, talk against them. Yes. So if you're, if out of your heart your mouth is speaking false teaching, then I'm going to come against yeah. you. Because we're called the blood to, of Jesus. Because yeah. actually, they tried to flip and say, you're, JC, are causing division. But no, as a flock member of the flock of Jesus Christ, this sheep is. Yes. So this sheep is causing division. And I'm going to bat and make a lot of noise and say, yeah, no, this isn't right. Yeah, because we are under the covering of a pastor and we are teachable and we are correctable. Mm-hmm. So... If you're not, you got some issues and, um, you, you know, if you're God's anointed, then God's going to shine through you. But if all I hear is you talking about you, Mm -hmm. then you're your own God and that's not God's anointed. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Rachel. So what did you think of that format of going through articles? I like it. My eye is twitching the entire time. I'm very upset about Celine. (laughs) Yeah. I'm very upset. I'll tell you what else. The devil is all over me because of this vest, because of that visual of mammon. Mm. So I want to break the power off of that because we're in the world. We're not of the world. And as long as we don't place our things before our God, we can't get into idolatry. And I always use myself as an example because that's how God teaches us, right? Right. Through ourselves. So, but it has been all over me that this God of mammon is like this bronzed creature. And I think of, according to this guy that saw him, supposedly, I think of the Oscars. Mm -hmm. I think of the statues. I think of the idolatry. Even Natalie Portman, who's from Israel, explains to her children, because she has Oscars, that those are idols. Mm. Yeah. She even breaks it down and tells her kids that they're they're idols. Yeah. So I feel like um, before we got on, I was listening to some worship. Mm. And Rachel and I are going to do some shows on music, Mm. the frequencies, the tones, the intent behind music and how Lucifer was the music director in heaven and how even on worship music, there can be a spirit. There can be worship bands that are trying to get famous and using Jesus to do it. A different agenda. Yeah. A different agenda. So there are two ways that you get famous. God raises you up or you have to sacrifice something to Satan. There is no other way to get famous in this world. You can hear it from famous people. There's no, you can't just work hard and get famous on your own. There are two entities that that make you famous. God raises you up or Satan raises Mm -hmm. you up. And that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. So there, there's an, I mean, so you think about some of the famous worship bands, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who raised them up? Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, but if your song doesn't talk about the blood of Jesus, the cross of Jesus, self-denial, deny yourself, pick up your cross. If your song doesn't mention Jesus, I have to ask about your intention behind that song. I'm just saying. Yeah. But anyway, so. And I had to say this too. The devil and his minions, the demons, they know scripture. They know what happens. So. Don't let that fool you when you hear demons speak of scripture because right. they know and, it. And goosebumps are just an indication of a spiritual yeah. realm, not necessarily the Holy Spirit. Because you are a spiritual being. So you have being. to test the yeah. spirits. You mm-hmm. have to test the spirits. You can get goosebumps when you're afraid and mm-hmm. the spirit of fear is there. Mm-hmm. So um, you have to test the spirits. So anyway, 
And I say all that to say, I was listening to a song by Tori. I forget her last name, but it's Psalm 42. It's scriptural. It's mm. as the deer pants. So my soul pants for you. Mm. I just wanted to weep mm. because God is so amazing. And even in all of this crap, even in all of this rivalry, and even in all of this darkness, we're in a move of God, you guys. You need to jump on board. We're in a move of God. Mm -hmm. There are more people. I don't know why I notice. I guess God's causing me to notice, but there's more people not celebrating Halloween. There's just a couple more that didn't celebrate Halloween. That's exciting. Yeah, there's a couple churches that didn't have a fall yeah. festival. There's, I mean, and, and Rachel and I, we said when God gave us this, we just said, you know what, Lord, we're going to do it if this is just me and her and there's nobody watching. We're just going to do it because of you. And I like to be super on time, and I am working on fear and control right now. And I, we don't like to be late. And, and a lot of times on Saturday mornings, we're running late and we jump on at like 8.05 or we have to post that we're not going to be on. But at the same time, Rachel and I have sacrificed every Saturday morning, almost since October 1st of 2018 for the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm just so thankful for what he's done in our lives because of it. So whatever he's calling you to do, just do it. Yeah. And you're not going to gonna make it. all the right decisions. No. You're going to make gonna, mistakes. He's going to help like you. Us. Just do it. Mm-hmm. If it's read, if it's get up five minutes early, if it's get up before work and work out, whatever you think you can't do, ask him and just, just do it. it. Yeah. Because it's so worth it, what yeah. he's doing in our lives and what he's doing in our families. Yeah. The changes. And we're not perfect. I mean, you heard our show from last week. But yeah. I just feel like I just want to praise him. Right yeah, now. let's do it. Father, I thank you, God. You're so majestic, and you're so awesome, and you're so mighty, and you're so powerful, and you're so good. And Lord, we are not, like, what they teach us to be here on earth as Christians is not what we should be as Christians. When we sit in church, they just act like they being the leadership of that church. I feel like all I ever got was, you need to be in church that's not true. The church is the body of you're Christ. The it says so. Yes. yes, you're the church. We're the church. Jesus is the head of the church. They say you have to do good. You have to do good works. You have to be nice to people. That's not necessarily true. We have to be led of our spirit. So I feel like, and I know a lot of people are in this boat, Lord. I feel like because I heard these things, I went out of my way to give to this person or give to that person or give to this charity or give to this person on the street corner. And I never stopped to ask you. I was led by a man. I was led by a pastor in a pulpit. I was always following their directions. I was never redirected back to you. And Lord, that's what's on our heart for, for Moms of Miracles Because you are the God of the individual, you are the God of each one of our temples, each one of us is going to have different directions. And it's just a beautiful thing when we can each hook up with another person and meet another person and converse with another person who happened to be going in the same direction at the same rate, at the same speed. That's a really cool thing, Lord. But we're pretty much on our own each following your voice individually and you're in charge of connecting. So Lord, we don't want to spend our resources at the wrong place because we're taking directions from a man or a woman who's not sacrificing themselves and denying themselves for you. And Lord, we just give you praise that we are, Lord. I thank you that you constantly convict Rachel and I that you're speaking to us because you're always speaking and we stop to listen. I thank you, Lord, that you created the hole in my heart that needed you to fill. I thank you, God, that you caused us to love you and that you worked on our hearts. I thank you, Father, that we don't have to be ashamed that we wasted 10 years somewhere But we can glorify your holy name because your word was a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And you led us through particular environments to see what we should do, what we should say, what we shouldn't say. 
and just how to follow you. So, Lord, we surrender all that we have right now. We surrender our clothes. We surrender our makeup, our hair accessories. We surrender wanting to look good. We surrender America. We surrender um, our homes. We surrender our desires for new homes. We surrender our vehicles broken in working condition or not working condition. We surrender them. We surrender money, money that we don't have, money that we want, and money that is in the bank. We surrender it. It's, it belongs to you. We surrender our children. Have your way with our children. They do not belong to us. They are yours first. We surrender our jobs, our coworkers. We surrender our bosses and those in authority over us. We surrender to you, Lord, the President of the United States of America. We surrender to you this country, our neighborhoods, our communities, our cities, our townships, our schools. We surrender to you our principals, the teachers over our children. We surrender to you the work of our hands. We surrender to you our lips. We surrender to you our words. We surrender to you our hearts. We ask that you would create in us a clean and a pure heart, Lord, because out of the heart, the mouth speaks. We surrender to you, Father, any image that the world would try to place on us, and we ask that you would exchange it for who you created us to be today, Lord, a true image of ourselves that we would accept. Father, right now, we accept who you created us to be. We create our, we, we accept our weight. We accept our height. We accept the color of our hair. We accept our eye color. We accept our foot size. We accept the sound of our voice. We accept our bodies, the shapes of our bodies, the size of our hands, the way our fingernails look. We accept the texture of our skin. We accept the color of our skin. We accept the size of our ears, the shape of our ears. We accept the way our mind works. We accept the quirks, the possibilities, the dreams that you placed within us. We accept these things, Lord. We accept who you created us to be. We accept the families that you placed us into. We accept who you created us to be today, Lord God. We accept our children, who you created them to be today. We accept our spouses. We accept our siblings. We accept our moms, our dads, our aunts, our uncles, our cousins, our extended family. We accept our friends, our neighbors. We accept where you placed us, Lord, in community with the rest of the world. Because if there's darkness around you, it's because you are the light. You need to shine So many times I ask, Lord, why did you place me in this neighborhood? Because I'm the light in this neighborhood. So I accept my sinful neighbors. I accept they are in need of a savior. And I accept that the kingdom of heaven is in me, Lord. So I ask that you would help me direct it. Father, that you would direct it, that you would tell us who to speak to, Tell us what to say. Tell us if we're to witness. Tell us what part of the labor we're actually doing. Are we planting a seed? Are we bringing the harvest? Father, make us sensitive to your spirit. Cause a sensitivity to your people. If we're not supposed to talk with them, we accept the fact that we can not talk to them. We come against all false burdens and compassions and rescuing spirits. Father, we just want so to be intricately led by your spirit. And I see like a new elevation. And Father, I thank you. We can receive acceptance today. I accept the car that I drive. I accept the job that you've given me. I accept the community that you've placed me in. I accept what I look like, what I sound like. It's on purpose. You need to accept who God created you to be. We spend our lives forcing and hating and kicking against who God created us to be that we never can enter into our purpose because we're fighting it. 
So in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against all spirits that cause you to fight who God created you to be. I bind them up. I loose angels to put them in a cage, Lord. Rach, do you have any prayers before we move on to warfare? No, go for it. Okay. If you, um, I just want to explain really quick. So Jesus is the deliverer. Mm -hmm. You have to know him to be delivered. Deliverance is the journey of transformation from your rotten, sinful self into a into Jesus, into more Christ-like. If you can't love people or accept them without coveting, hating, um, jealousy, anger, if you still erupt, you're not like Jesus. You're not Christ-like. Deliverance is is changing into Christ from from glory to glory into his image. And you can get delivered by Jesus is the deliverer, right? But deliverance, a, a, a leg of deliverance is taking authority over what causes you to feel icky, to feel jealous, to feel angry, to feel covetous, covetous. So we come against that in the name of Jesus Christ, but you have to know him to come against it because Satan knows who knows him. And Satan knows who believes him. And Satan knows who have faith. And if you think that I have greater authority than you, it's because Satan knows that I know who he is. So that's the only difference. We have the same authority because Jesus gave it to us. So you have to know him. And how you know him is you just say, Jesus, I give you my sin. I have fallen short of your glory. I cannot make it into heaven alone. I need you to be the Lord of my life. Forgive my sins. I receive you as my Savior. And that's it. You're in the kingdom of heaven, and now we can war over you. So I have 10% battery. Father, I just ask that you would extend this as we pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I just lift, I lift you, Father, Jesus, be glorified. King Jesus, be glorified. Thank you for the finished work of the cross. Thank you for the blood that you shed for us. And thank you for the resurrection that you were raised again and that we are raised to life with you, seated in heavenly places, and that our last breath on this earth is our first breath with you. And we do not fear death. It is a transition into eternity with you. And so I look forward to that day, Father. But we have a purpose, and we have a purpose to live, and Satan is coming against it. So we come against him with the name and with the blood of Jesus Christ. Satan, we are serving you an eviction notice out of the people that are watching, out of the people that will listen, out of the people that will listen to this prayer. We're serving you an eviction notice in their lives. Today marks your day of reckoning. And Father, I ask that you would do something amazing today, and I ask that your scribe angels would mark it in a book in the courts of heaven that today was a day of reckoning in someone's life. So Satan, I come against you and I break every cord of control that you have over these people's lives. I break every cord of control we send all witchcraft back to the heads of the sender today. Every he- every hex and vex and spell and incantation and anything chanted, any voodoo, um, gossip, slander, murmuring, javelins of jealousy, psychic prayers, we return it all. We don't receive any of it. We send it back to the heads of the sender times seven. You will learn not to mess with God's people. We plead the blood of Jesus over us from the tops of our heads to the bottoms of our feet. We cancel every assignment that the devil has against us, against our children, against our marriages, our jobs, our communities, our neighborhoods, our peace, our health, and our finances in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we declare your will be done in our lives and in our jobs. And we speak against right now anger and fear and ferociousness, the um, the seething anger that you get because you're afraid you're going to lose control. You need to go right now in Jesus' name. All fear, all trepidation, all anxiety, you need to leave God's people right now. Abuse, wounded love, deep hurt. (coughs) Excuse me, I'm getting deliverance. Hallelujah, Lord. All wounds from betrayal and humiliation and embarrassment, you need to leave right now in Jesus' name. You don't belong. I'm calling all strongholds out of the mind all strongholds. I loose angels into people's environments right now to help shift the atmosphere and cage these demons, take them away to where Jesus would have them to go all betrayal, humiliation, all um, past regret, shame, guilt, and condemnation, constantly berating yourself and beating yourself up because you should have, woulda, coulda. Guess what? That was written into your plan. You should, you did, 
and, and it was all for a purpose. And so now you need to do, and you need to look forward and you need to move ahead. So I come against the demons that, that burden you burdens, lots and lots of burdens and heaviness and sadness, um, not inability to cope, inability to cope with the loss of a loved one or grief. Listen, they're in the arms of Jesus. So I come against all that heaviness in Jesus name. Father, we just, um, we just seal today with praise, Lord. We just give you all praise. Do you have anything, Rach? Praise God then. Thank you, Lord. I just felt like, um, wow, nobody accepts themselves. And how perfect that the spirit of the Lord would give me that with this transgender thing. That's the whole problem. Praise God. Praise God. As, yes, as, as the Lord leads, we have purchased groceries for a mom in need. We have purchased, like, we want to do scholarships for some of Pastor Monty's workshops. Like we want to be able to fly people in to Colorado to, to change their life with deliverance. So we need funds to be able to do that. And honestly, I boldly ask the Lord to get, to start getting tithes from, from those of you who are not getting fed at your own church. If you're not being equipped to battle, the storehouse doesn't just mean where you store the food, as pastors like to talk about in Malachi 3. The storehouse means the arsenal, Mm -hmm. the armory where you get weapons. If Mm -hmm. you're not being equipped to war, if you're just being taught how to be a leader and you're not being spiritually fed, then we've asked the Lord for the tithes from that, from those people. And it looks like I was muted for everybody else, but not you, JC. So what we were saying is go to moms of miracles website and let us know guys, what you would want to see on this website, what resources, what would functionality, because there's a lot of people who aren't on social media and we are uh, not getting to those people. So we, uh, I felt it really heavily on the heart to uh, share with everybody that, Uh, our resources, what we recommend, um, and what we're teaching and what uh, we're sharing with everyone. Let me make sure I have all my... Rachel mutes it, you guys, because she doesn't want Eva to be distracting in the background, but I think Eva is precious. Oh, well, I have have Rudy barking now, and it's starting to get a little bit crazy, so I do mute. (laughs) Okay, one other thing, and then we were asking that if you do donate, we have a donate button. We do get asked quite frequently. And she uh, said, donate could- as much as you want because it goes towards our website, our overhead, our cost, um, tools we need to broadcast. If God tells us to buy somebody a book or something who can't mm-hmm. afford it, we did that this week. We've purchased groceries for a mom in need, and we want to give scholarships to Pastor yes, Monty's yes, deliverance in conferences. In case you didn't hear that part. And One we other need money thing, to do that. And if there's another way you can support the ministry is if you go to youhadmeatcoffee.com. That's the letter U, had me at coffee.com. This is where we talk about all our coffee that we're talking about. And as soon as you go on the page, you'll see a video that we did with our friend Michelle from All Things Made New. It's a great, fabulous video. If you really want to see how JC is on a couple of cups of coffee and I think an energy drink, that's a funny video to watch. But we talk in depth about the products and you can purchase the products right here. If you want wholesale pricing, message us and we'll get you signed up through Valentis. 
And that's I, it. I just want to say really quickly that um, God gave us this coffee business to allow us to be able to do ministry mm-hmm. and pray for y'all. And I'm not ashamed y'all. to ask you to buy our coffee. Our coffee is amazing. Yeah. And because you're a Moms of Miracles community, we'll give you a wholesale price on it. But if you're blessed by any, any ministry's sacrifice to the Lord, you need to give to that ministry. If it's Sheila Zielinski, if it's Pastor yes, Monty, if it's us, friends. if it's Omega Man, if it's Josh Peck, you need to be giving. Christians need to be uplifting Christians or else Christian stuff like this will be going away. Yeah, It'll be replaced yeah, because yeah. Oprah gets funds from the world. Okay. Oprah ain't doing that for free. Mm-hmm. Or it's not coming out of her own pocket. Mm-mm. Well, yeah. Okay, you know where we're going. Okay, guys, uh, so we love you guys. Have a great. Tomorrow we're on with Jason. What are we talking about with Jason tomorrow? Oh, okay, so we're, we're doing all follow-up questions. Okay. We're going to be touching on Nephilim. We're going to be touching on Antichrist. We're going to be touching on why the Antichrist is a Nephilim in his opinion. We're going to be touching on Ground Zero, Jerusalem, the hot spot, and just kind of over the next few Sundays through the end of the year, we're going to be doing that with Jason. Be prepared to see Jason by himself doing some Bible studies. Be prepared to see Dina and Dana. Yeah. Um, and then January first is coming up. Be prepared to go live with us on our own on our own platform. Website. As I figure that out, pray oh, for she me. Figures that out. Pray for us. Yay. Love you guys. We love you. Have Bye. Bye, Rach. Bye.